Okay, <coughs> so uh, the title of my talk is here. This work is made in our Institute of Solid State Physics in Chernogolovka, and I uh, would like to introduce my collabor collaborators, co authors. Mm. The samples we prepare in group of Axel Lorke in Duisburg, and uh, high quality wafers were obtained from a group of Lucia Sorba from uh, Trieste and Pisa. Okay, I, my introduction will be quite short because at this conference there is no science to speak about edge states. I only say that edge states are rising at the sample edges in the quantum hole effect regime. And the transport in, the, in this regime can be described as transport from, through this one dimensional edge state as was first shown by Bittke. Okay, also about quantum interferometers. Now everybody here knows that uh, with help of edge states and uh, qu quantum point contacts, it's possible to realize two types of interferometers, uh, fabri pirot interferometer and mach sender interferometer. This picture is from the review of Adistan. And uh, uh, just as a history, this great interest to the interferometer, it was arisen after this work from group of high bloom. Um, in this group, Mark Center interferometer was realized. But uh, as about Fabry period interferometer, there is a big activity of group of Goldman. As you know, uh, and it is very interesting that the first realization of the Fabry period interferometer, it was uh, 20 years ago uh, by Van Wies. What I want to pay your attention, uh, all these interferometers, as I described before, they, are, they rely on quantum point contact. In the, in the quantum point contact, two edge states, they are counter-propagating near each other. They, are, they originate from different sample edges. They are so counter-propagating. And uh, electron transfer is uh, between these counter-propagating edge states. My question is, is it possible to realize interferometer device for co-propagating edge states? Uh, this problem is uh, the transport between co-propagating edge states. It's something different. In this transport, uh, we should work with edge states which are at the same sample edge. And if we transfer electron between them, we should not, uh, should not change the sign of the group velocity of the electron. So this is another transport problem, and uh, there are some theoretical publications. This is uh, the <coughs> latest two ones, uh, which calculate different transport characteristics in this situation and compare with counter-propagation. And uh, if I want to make interferometer, what should I do? I should take a uh, sample edge. One edge state is going along the sample edge. And uh, another edge state, which, is, uh, which should be independently co uh, contacted, it should be far away. After that, I should bring two edge states into an interaction in some small region. Also, they should be disconnected after that. And uh, should be another uh, region of the uh, interaction. So for an electron here in this edge state, it goes here, here, here. It can be transmitted between edge states here or can be so-called reflected. Really, it goes along the edge state. And the same in this situation. Electron can be transmitted here or reflected. So there are two trajectories for one electron, this trajectory, and go to the contact, or this trajectory, and go to the contact. And if I change a flux quantum through the effective area, I change the phase between these trajectories, and so I will see oscillations. This is just an, an idea. And this is experimental realization. I start from our quasi carbonate geometry, which we used for many years for study transport between edge states. And the idea is the following. Uh, the sample is a square form. It is a macroscopic sample, about one millimeter. Also, we have macroscopic region, edged region inside. So we have outer edge, we have inner edge, and ohmic contacts are made to both edges. Also, we use gate, this is gray, to deplete uh, two-dimensional gas under the gate to a low filling factor. For example, in quantizing magnetic field, we can obtain filling factor 2 here, 
foil to dimensional electron gas and field factor one here. What is mean for edge states? Under the gate, there is one edge state which goes along the sample edge, and uh, here and here there, there should be two edge states because of field factor two. It means that one edge state, edge state is going along the gate edge, and here two edge states are in connection. The, uh, they run together in some distance. And these edge states originate from different contexts, so they are independently contacted, and I can apply potential imbalance to these contacts, and it means that I apply potential imbalance between these two edge states, electrochemical potential imbalance between these two edge states. This region, it, it is of order of several microns in the real sample, so this picture is not in scale. Uh, and to make interferometer, what I need? I need to divide this interaction region onto several interaction regions by, with the help of small gate fingers. And you see in this picture that uh, these gate fingers are connected to the main, main gate. So uh, around one finger, I have the situation which I described before exactly. So one edge state is still going along the edge and also under the fingers. And uh, another edge state, which is from inner contacts, it is uh, connected here between the fingers, also goes around the finger, and also connected here. So uh, I use several fingers just to make uh, some... Um, Okay, uh, device which is analogous to the Fabry Perot interferometer to have multiple reflections because I can say that here it is a reflection of electron, here can, it can be transmitted or reflected, and so on. If I have, for example, 10 fingers, I will have multiple reflections. I want to pay your attention that it is not a real Fabry Perot because in my device there is no backscattering, it is not real reflection, it's just it just go away, and number of so-called reflections is just the number of the fingers. Of course, it should be smaller, the size should be smaller than the coherence size. So the size of one finger is about 200 nanometers. And uh, this is also different from electronic Mach center interferometer, just because there is no edge region inside. There is no, uh, uh, yes, edge region inside, so if normal Fabry Perot interferometer is a quantum dot and Max and uh, have antidote inside. I have no dot and have no antidote. So it's something different. And uh, this is experimental results. If I working with if I am working with uh, <coughs> sample without this gate finger structure, I can apply current between outer and inner contacts and measure voltage and change magnetic field around film factor two. I, for this experiment, I use quite uh, a sample with moderate mobility with high concentration to have wide uh, thin factor two, and the signal will be along this dashed line, no special features. If, I, if I'm working with my interferometer samples, there is a shallow structure of the oscillations along this uh, behavior. These oscillations are more pronounced at the high field edge of the plateau. They are not so pronounced uh, at the low field edge of the plateau. And they are equidistant in the magnetic field. Uh, I can estimate period, and it is roughly correspond to our uh, size of one finger. The same experiment can be made around field factor three with the same uh, one edge state under the gate. So really for the same edge states, and uh, you see also oscillations. The signal is a bit noisy because small signals. But in any case, we have uh, equidistant uh, oscillations. Uh, OK, I demonstrate that I can see interference oscillations. But now it is a question. If I am speaking about two, near, two edge states, <coughs> they originate from nearest to down level, spin split. So. What is the coherence between spin splitted edge states? The answer is the following. Uh, energy structure in this interaction region is the, is the following, just like Shklovsky's Shklovsky. 
In contrast to simple beauty picture in the real samples, uh, Landau level is pinned to the thermal level in some region, which is called a compressible state. The nearest level is also pinned to the thermal level, and between them there is a gap, so incompressible quantum hole state at a local filling factor one, for example, here. And of course, if I want to make transport from this point to this point, I should change the spin of electron, and it will be a problem with coherence. But if I apply high enough electrochemical potential imbalance, I can obtain a situation of flat band. So I should move this part of the picture down. Uh, and electron here, it can move along the empty Landau level to this edge state. Of course, it, it, should, it should relax, but it should, can relax um, far from the interaction region in contact, for example, so I can, uh, can forget about it. And it means that this is the answer why we see the oscillations really at high imbalances. You see these values about millivolts. This, this is because we should apply electrochemical potential imbalance higher than the spectral gap, uh, Zeeman gap in this case. Uh, but after that, there is a question. If I want to study fractional quantum hole state, so a local fraction of local filling factor, for example, one third, what should I see? And is it possible to see interference at, at all? Because we have a lowest Landau level pinned to the thermal level. We have electrons here and here. And here we have a fractional quantum hole state. I cannot really show this state in this picture because this is a single particle picture. I only can say that in this region it should be gap at the thermal level. Uh, this state is characterized by uh, its spe excitation spectrum, uh, the Laughlin excitations and by the edge excitation modes as normal quantum hole, uh, fractional quantum hole liquid. And if I apply electrochemical potential imbalance, I should take an electron, really, and to add to this fractional quantum hole state. So I cannot say in advance, is it possible to see interference or not? Because I have at the sample edge both electrons and both quasi particles. The experimental result is uh, a bit strange. For IC interference for complicated fractional local filling factors like 4 third and 2 third. For example, here for 4 third, uh, I see here you see denoted the shallow oscillations, which, which are absent for samples without uh, this finger structure, and also for 2 third. This is for different, two different samples. I see on this signal this shell oscillations structure. So I can say that I see interference oscillations for these uh, fractional feelings. But for my, <coughs> it's very strange for me, I don't see interference oscillations for the simplest roughly one third. I see only the signal and no this shell oscillation structure. And my guess is the very simple. Uh, I'm not sure that it's correct, but the idea is the following. Uh, if I have here two-thirds or third-thirds, I should remember that uh, these uh, complicated uh, ground states, they are constructed as a field Landau level and quasi-electron and quasi-hole state on this background. So this uh, field Landau level, it gives rise to the branch in the edge excitation spectrum, in the excitations. And uh, I see interference oscillations only in this situation if I have filling, filling Landau level as background in this uh, fractional filling. So I can say that I see interference oscillations for normal electrons even in the fractional quantum hole effect regime. And for one third, as in this picture, where there is no field to Landau level, I don't see anything. So this is a uh, conclusion. First of all, uh, this fabric Perot interferometer is realized for co cooperating electrons. I can say that even at fractional fillings, I have interference conditions for normal electrons, if it's possible, of course. And about the period, I'm quite sure that uh, I cannot obtain that my period is de determined, first of all, by the effective area of the 
interferometer, which is sensitive to the magnetic field because of screening at the sample edge, which is sensitive to the Finan factor, to the magnetic field. And uh, it is not so straightforward to compare periods for fractional oscillations and integral oscillations. They are different, of course, but uh, I think that they are determined, first of all, by the effective area of the interferometer. So that's all. I may be wrong, but I think Fabry Perro is definitely the wrong analogy. I think a more correct one is called the Lomma Gurke interferometer, where you have uh, periodic scatterers, but only action in one direction. And it's sort of similar to what they do with optical fibers. They put uh, periodic planes of scatterers, and then it becomes like a one dimensional Bragg uh, refraction. I mean, you said yourself that the Fabry Perro is not your yes. analogy. Have a look at uh, Lama Gerke in the classic optics. Uh, uh, yes, uh, maybe you are right. So just, uh, it was first idea the, yeah, yeah, to yeah. realize as Fabry Perot, but now I understand that it's really not Fabry Perot, it's a different type, yes. Yeah, I guess you, you two should have a <laughs> lunch, lunch discussion. Um, speaking of lunch, we should press on a bit. Uh, our last speaker of this session is 